Hello, this is your host, Christina from Savvy Radio. Thank you for joining us for our Heartbeat of the World video series, where we're bringing you some of the top experts around the globe to talk about some of the greatest challenges facing our country and the world. Style and fashion expert Sharon Haver is every woman's fashion stylist and beauty guru. She knows the business of being beautiful inside and out. As a mentor, Sharon turned her love of shopping and style into an expansive over 20-year career. Today she joins us to share how entrepreneurs can look and feel their best. Find out more about Sharon and her work at FocusOnStyle.com. Hi, Sharon. Welcome to Savvy Business Radio and our new video series, Heartbeat of the World. And you help entrepreneurs out there get styling and grooving with their perfect style for them because everyone's different. Not one, one style doesn't work for one person, works for another. And so the name of your company, Focus on Style. And you're going to share a little bit about your background first before we go to all of the tips and such. What brought you to being a style expert? <laughs> it was a funny thing. I actually grew up with a mom who loved expensive clothes, and we by far did not have that budget. Wow. So I grew up in a store called with Lowman's. Most kids went to summer camp. I went to Lowman's. And back in the day, it was one of the original designer discount stores. So the clothes were all mishmash on a rack, and the labels were pulled out because no designer went to admit that you can get clothes that cheap. So you had to sort of identify the things by the threads of the label. But more important, you identified it by the seaming and the construction of the outfit and it was just a total helter skelter mishmash and then I became a chubby kid and the good part of being chubby at a young age is you got to wear like grown-up clothes at a young ah. age so I got used to it and I really loved style I really loved fashion I loved how I can transform myself and more importantly how I could feel good about myself so when it came to be time in to go to college I was thinking of fashion and my parents were like, no. And my father was in advertising at the time and I had advertising jingles on records all over the place. And my mom was like, you are not, not, absolutely not getting a fashion degree. You are going to get a business degree. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I have a business degree. Actually, it's, it's in marketing. And I started out in um, PR very briefly. Actually, my first my first job when I was in college, which was an intern that became an assistant, became a coordinator really fast, was at a plastics trade magazine. So I had to learn how to type, you know, polypropylene with my really poor typing. Wow. And my first freelance job was writing a press release for manhole cover epoxy. And then I started doing some like a little PR while I was in school and sort of out of it with rock bands and realized I didn't like to get paid the way they wanted to pay me. Mm. And um, I was in PR for a little bit and I always felt style. And then and my company just, they switched. Mm. So I wasn't working, but I managed to leave with this nice little chunk of money. And I was really young. Mm. So my friend called me up one day and he's, um, you want to come to St. Martin? You want to go on a photo shoot and be a stylist for three weeks? I'm like, oh yeah, cool. Why not? Sure. So I, you know, I went like, okay. And I styled for this company and it was a huge corporation. And I came back and all my friends, because they were also in the arts and creative, would say, hey, you want to you wanna style this shoot for me? You want to do this? And soon I started working on Vogue covers. And the client that I started with, mm -hmm. it was way back. It was $75 a day. And then when they went to rehire me, I had an agent was able to bump it up to $750 a day. So that was a, a nice, you know, so I'm like... This is, could kind of work for me. And I ended up being a stylist for 15 years. Mm. And I realized that most women were so intimidated by style. And from what I can see on the shoot was these models didn't come in looking so hot. There was the hair. It was the makeup. It was mm. the lighting. It was the clothes. It was the way they held themselves. They mm. stepped into their own star power. Mm. And it was the same thing when you'd work with actors and actresses. And people would say, well, I can't do that. I'm not an actor. I'm not an actress. I'm like, well, it's garbage. Of course you can. So I pitched a column to the Scripps Howard Newswire, which went out to 400 papers each week, Focus wow. on Style. It was a stylist advice column. Mm -hmm. And then that eventually morphed into FocusOnStyle.com, which I founded in 1999. And I've always had my heart with, with real people because I didn't get into style as being sort of a fan of fashion. I got into it as being a fan of feeling great about myself mm -hmm. and really realizing that I felt good. So why couldn't someone else? And then as the site has been online, my, my, 
my attention is now, because it always continues to, you know, where you are in your life. Mm -hmm. Since I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a business person and, you know, I spend like this much of my day in fashion and that much of my day creating brands, looks, and businesses is working with other entrepreneurs and helping them step into their own star power and help them learn how to find their own star power ROI, which is looking relevant on the market, interesting, Mm -hmm. and being on brand because it's, it's far more interesting to me than, you know, the outfit of the week. So, Mm -hmm. you're, you know, the outfit of your life, what makes you feel great? No, we're not all, you know, there's no one size fits all. We're all special snowflakes. We're, you know, we all look different. I was saying before the show that I love pink hair. I once had a pink wig that I was totally like in love with. So, you know, we're all special and we need to celebrate that and in business day on brands. I love that. And it's very interesting. I worked in corporate for 25 years and it was very in the box. I had to wear a suit every day. I definitely could not have pink hair back then. (laughs) Um, But it it was interesting because I remember I would dress a certain way when I first started in corporate that I didn't realize did not really benefit me to the most of my abilities. And my boss called me in one day and said, I don't know if you realize this, but you kind of dress like a 14 year old. (laughs) You have like um, glittery eyeshadow on, um, spiky hair and really funky outfits that are very tight not appropriate for the office and if you're looking to have a career or or to move up here that's not going to cut it and I, I felt really humiliated by him telling me that because you know it's yeah you know, it's my I think I look great but actually what I thought in my own head of my own image was not the way people were perceiving me uh, he did me the greatest thing back in corporate um, I actually went out that evening went to Macy's bought three suits and a briefcase came in the next day and started acting the part it's amazing when you wear the suit how it just made, puts you in the frame like I started walking like I like I belong you carry yourself differently mm-hmm Mm -hmm. And so that goes to say, when you work with people often, do they, the image they have in themselves, is it often different than what the public sees in them or what, what has been your experience? Absolutely. There's kind of, um, there's kind of three groups of people. I was just thinking about this in the shower this morning. I was on a, I was on a, a, a call yesterday with, I don't know, about 25 different people. And it just occurred to me, there's the people who have their own sense of style, who, who get it, you know, they look good, they get it. But maybe just like in anything in life, you don't know everything. We're not omnipotent. So you still have, I still have a business coach. I have a really high level business coach, but I've been in business for, I don't know, 30 years, as long as I've been in style. So you still get tweaks and tips from someone else because I believe that coaching and consulting and having other people on your team that see things that you don't is really paramount to success. So there's the people who get it, but maybe they don't get it as the fonts and the colors of their brand and the design and how they project on that image, but they they pretty much, they get it. Mm-hmm. And then there's the people who I guess were kind of like how you were, who um, have no clue, but they know everything, right? They have no clue. I look good, I look great. I'm, that, I'm like, uh, no. Really? Like you're wearing leggings at a business conference and you're like crotch is showing and you're like website has this curly Q font in like blue and green, which is bank colors. And I can't read it. It looks like you're a cookie manufacturer for banks and you're like a finance coach. It's like, mm-hmm. but they're like, no, 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 I everything. Every special snowflake will find their day. They can go, (laughs) they can go there until they have their moment of enlightenment. And then there's the people who have no clue. They have no clue, but they're smart enough to know what they have no clue about and realize that if I need to get ahead, it's exactly, it is based on perception. So the way it is now with the internet is we are all our own stars. We are right there on a Facebook feed. You see me, you see you, maybe you see Gwyneth, maybe you see JLo, maybe you see Naomi Campbell, maybe you see Hillary Clinton, maybe you see, I don't know, Suzanne Evans and Shalene Johnson coming down your thread, and then you see this woman, you're like, what? <laughs> what? Oh, is that? You know what? And she looks like a mess, and her hair is a mess, and her backdrop's a mess, and she's wearing like some t shirt she got at some giveaway, and she's all like, I, I mean, I was on this thing yesterday, and there was this person, I was just like, wanted to reach my hand through the camera, and they had their the camera, so the only thing you could see of them, oh, this, my nose, online, it's like from here up. 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> Joe, and it's like all of this. Oh, wow. Is how you are perceived. Mm-hmm. So if you're sitting there like this and you don't look pro and you don't look on brand and it's not just your clothes, it's your business card, it's your font, it's your marketing, it's your, it's your handshake when you meet people. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all goes together to kind of step in your own star power. And actually, the people who have no clue, who need the help, the mo- want the help, they're the ones who have the biggest transformations because they're ready. You know, they're ready to make a difference. They're not like holding on to like, I know everything. And then, well, you know, it's just, it's yeah. hard to... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and a little bit there. Those are the hardest. Yeah, yeah. And then back in corporate, I thought, well, I, I can do whatever I want. It's my fashion. And I like dressing with, you know, um, funky hair and, 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 and these outfits and, and this eyeshadow and whatever. But until he told me that really what you think looks great does not look great in this environment and it's hurting you. And, and he broke it down for me that I will not grow in corporate until I change my look. Unless you don't want to be here and you want to be somewhere else where that fashion would just work out perfectly. But if you want to grow here in a corporate environment, you have to look the part. But the same token, you can still be, be authentic depending on how corporate it is, depending on the city you're in. So let's say you really wanted your pink hair to stand out for instance, right? So you can have your pink hair in like a really cool kind of bob, like a really statement making thing. And then wear something simple like a black pencil skirt and maybe a white button down shirt and like really sexy, fabulous heels that, you know, but not, yeah, you can't walk in, but you know, like really good pumps mm-hmm. and not with toe cleavage because that looks a little creepy in the office, but you know, and then that hair of yours would be a statement and that would be your mm-hmm. accessory, so to speak. And I think that's something that people miss. It's like, I was talking to someone yesterday and she was saying, this was like this crazy busy day around here. And she was saying, well, I have this boho lifestyle and I'm always a little hippie, but I want to, you know, when I'm with corporate, how do I do it? I do I need a whole new wardrobe. And it's like, same thing. It's like, totally no, you can wear the boho kind of drapey good top, but maybe like wear a blazer over it. That's more structured and tailored where it would like straight pants and really nice pumps. So it, grounded in that outfit is sort of the accessory of your style. So the problem is when you have too many things with competing messages and no one knows where to look because you've got pink hair and long earrings and glittery eyes and a short skirt and a lot of flounce and anklets with your platforms and you know you've got all these signals but if you just take one and you ground it by more the field the industry you're in it's a, a really nice way to tweak your style and to stay authentic and and still look relevant wherever you go I love that staying authentic and what I did when I went back to corporate I got the suits but I wore my long trademark earrings um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I could still feel like myself, but at the same time have a suit on. Um, but what I liked, and let's talk a little bit about this, what I've seen from some of my um, coaches that have come on board that I've met and wonderful people on Facebook and said, so I'll have awesome pictures are professionally done. They look fabulous. But on a day to day basis, when they're out and about and in life or even doing business in life, they don't always reflect the image they put online. <laughs> And, and that could be hard to keep it going. How do you keep that image going uh, that you've created online and build it into your life? Okay, that, that's a two-parter. I'm actually working on a program right now called Simply Amazing Headshots. You can go there at simplyamazingheadshots.com. And it's kind of like a pro-authentic way of doing it. So I don't believe that you necessarily need to go to get a professional headshot. And if you get a professional headshot, that's not from a really good photographer. And it's kind of more like the Sears big box. And you're that got that brown background and you're standing there. You know, more it doesn't serve you. So the internet has made it so that, you know, it's your magazine cover every day. It's like then that scroll people see you. So if you have a headshot, that's just completely disjointed from you. It's kind of like you're crying out loud saying, I need to get like, I need to get in the middle. I need to get together. So for headshots, you can do it yourself because just like now, if we're doing a promo for this, we don't need to use the same shot. Maybe we're going to just like, you know, 
take our phone yeah. to know how to do it or mm -hmm. something like that. So that's a skill that I think is important in this day and age as a business person is knowing how to look good in your photo. And that's why I'm creating Simply Amazing Headshots. What happens is when you have that, okay, <laughs> yeah. it's a litmus test of holy crud. My hair looks like my yearbook photo from high school. Oh my God, it's like I got rolls and ripples and wrinkles and my makeup is terrible and my outfit is awful and sorry, Siri's talking to me. And it, it becomes this like real, you know, like remember the first time you heard your voice on an answering machine? <laughs> You were like, oh my God, yeah. now we hear our voices all the time. So looking at your photo, it becomes the same thing. So that means, okay, there's a bigger picture here. I look like crud in my photo. I don't look like that when I walk into a room because I'm retouched for an inch of my life. What do I need to do to make it so that photo is my best self and I'm still my best self? Maybe the photo is a little retouching, but you still look like you yes. so it, it's like the cry out loud to like oh my god i have to do something yeah. and sometimes it's scary but it really should be fun you know yeah. and it can be fun i mean what i what i found a couple of years ago i needed a new shot and i i didn't have money to go to a, a, a photographer so i just sat up a, a camera on top of my computer here and did the best shot that was used for two years on my on my show with the headset sets on and whatever it looked great uh, it just happened to be a, a fluke shot that was perfect now what i found from a lot of my friends is they're getting older i'm near 50 and my friends were like you know i don't really want to be seen in pictures i feel old and, get a and good light there's a light on me right now <laughs> yeah me too that it, light is awesome if you play with light, light is better than Botox, you know, <laughs> light and makeup, dude, is yeah. perfect. But uh, what what I found about them is they will go out looking a bit disheveled and, and not looking their best or feeling their best, but you know have these great professional shots. And what I found when I would meet them, because sometimes I talk to them only online, and then we meet up for coffee, and they look like totally different people. So what do you suggest for people to always upkeep their picture that is relevant to where they are today? Or keep their uh, keep their style. I'm looking. To, I actually don't have a copy of it here. I usually do. I have a book that's coming out soon. It's called Style Word, and you go to Style Word book on that. And I did all the headshots myself because I totally believe, like in my my signature program, the Say She Crash Course. I do everything myself. In my on my book, I did my book headshots and the. The program will teach you how to do it. None of this stuff is genius work. You know, it's a skill. I learned the skill on photo shoots for 15 years. So if you, you know, have a problem with that, you, you don't feel good, you got a pain in your chest, do you ask your friend for help or do you go to a cardiologist? It's the same thing. You go to someone. So if you're lucky enough because the the world has changed so much. Well, you can get someone imparting their knowledge to you. You could learn how to do it yourself. Just like when you have someone who says, I don't know how to use the internet and I want to get a promotion. You're like, you know, what rock have you been living under? Same thing with these headshots and looking real. Yes, the shoemaker's children always go barefoot. I totally want to get a new headshot. We are postponing it for the program every week. Oh, I'm going to do this. Oh, I'm going to do that. I get it. But you know what? There's millions of pictures of me online almost every day. Mm -hmm. Whoops. And I'm not going to turn Siri on again because you have a phone now. And it makes it so easy. And it's the same thing. It, if you are going on a networking event, you need to look on brand. You need to look like you. So if you've been living especially when you work from home mm -hmm. and you're, I'm barefoot right now. I have two inch pairs of shoes. I am always barefoot when I'm home, but when I'm meeting you in my barefoot, do I have chip toenail polish? <laughs> like, no, you represent a person who someone look, wants to look at. And you know, when you're online, you see, I once went to a mastermind and some woman showed up in a, not only a bathrobe, but a brown terry cloth bath bathrobe. And it's like, I know you're working, exactly, it's gross. It's respect for the other yeah. one. But yeah. as we're in this world where our world is public, our public world and our private world sort of collide and mesh, mm -hmm. get married, you need to just step it up. And like I said earlier, that doesn't mean like you can't have pink hair and tweak your outfit for corporate. That means I work from home and I wear jeans almost every day. I know I'm seeing you. I might wear another top. It has actually is a t-shirt back. It's very comfortable. I can wear it at home all the time. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm just wearing a tank top, I know that if we have this, I could put a scarf on and a jacket and look 
done and put a little more makeup on that day. Exactly. So it's just knowing how to layer yourself up to be professional and on brand. And also when it goes back to your website and your social media and everything else, that it all is congruent, that it all looks like you. That's part of your star power is knowing you know, everything is right. And what happens is so many people hire business coaches and marketing coaches and finance coaches and this coach and that coach. And they're saying, okay, I'm doing everything this person is telling me, but I'm not getting any results. And one of the things you always need to look at, how is that person representing? Because that's What's keeping you broke? Do they look professional? Are their Facebook ads looking on the mark? Is there is everything? Are their brand colors? Their font? Do they look like today, or they still look like 1990? And you're like, oh, I don't want to grow, so I'm going to attract. I'm going to go to the person like 1990. Well, they're probably not making much money if they look that dated because you're perception and your data mm. you are perceived as not looking relevant they're going to you're going to be perceived as what comes out of your mouth and your abilities aren't relevant so it all goes together i know that was a very long answer but it's beyond your hair your clothes mm. your makeup it's it's the whole package Pack. of you that's perceived as being you know, I call it, you know, your ROI, relevant on the mark and interesting. And, you know, that's your star power ROI. It all goes together. And missing any of these elements, especially yeah. what people immediately see, is you're losing money because you're yeah. not perceived as someone who looks like they made it, who's relevant, who's worth it. Yeah, absolutely. And I like that you mentioned that because early on I made an error of having a guest on that felt a bit icky to me and I, I didn't go with my gut and I, I had them on. And I got a lot of negative feedback as well as losing listeners early on because of that choice. And so I realized early on that perception, even if these, even if I didn't, you know, say um, congruent with these people, we don't hang out for coffee, we're not friends. If they're part of my business or I'm bringing them into my circle here, or allowing them to be on the savvy um, circle, I, I'm also reflecting my brand. So I have to say, anyone that does not feel right cannot come into my brand. So it, it's interesting you mentioned it's that. Very, yeah, it's very interesting. Like there's people you'll talk to and and there's other people you're like, mm, no thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't gel, we don't gel. But also I'd like to mention, because I remember early on when I was, uh, say, my 20s and 30s, I like to dress much younger than my age. And now I'm 50, I like dressing like 50. I've gotten to that point where it feels good. You know, I've got a nice jacket on, I can still be funky and funky. But uh, what, do you, what do you say to people who are kind of stuck in like, I'm wearing 20 year old clothes, but it's not where they are today. How do you get them to see that you can still look awesome, but you don't need to dress like you did back in high school? Well, yeah, um, <laughs> it thinks, and you can wear 20 year old clothes, but you could re redo them a different way. Yeah. So I think one of the things people don't realize is, I don't know what dressing 50 is. I don't know if dress was 40 or 60 is. I think you should dress to be ageless because you need to dress for the shape you're in today. So today's 50 or 60 year old is probably cooler than 25 years old, 25 years ago when they were, you know, 50 and 60. Actually, people who are in like 45 to 60 ish, 60 something range now, we kind of came from a cooler background mm -hmm. at the time when we were coming of age. Yeah. So that also reflects in our spirit more than someone who came from like a stuffier period growing up. But I believe in looking ageless. You should look good. Like you should look good rather than, oh my gosh, she looks good for 50. It's like, I don't want to look good for 50. I don't want to look, you know, maybe I want to look good for 20. You know? mm -hmm. But you should look good for the, the age you are today. And it should be this innocuous number to everyone else. You should just look good, period. So the two things that age you the most are dressing too young and dressing dowdy because you're afraid and dressing mm -hmm. grumpy. So if you are, let's say, 50 or you're turning 50 and you're freaking out, you're like, I always wear short skirts. Can I still wear short skirts at 50? It's like, well, let's look at it this way. Do you have really great legs? <laughs> How yeah. is your body? Are you in good shape? That's one. How short is short? You know? And yeah. is the just the short skirt you're wearing? Maybe it's a short, but it's a sophisticated style. It's more elegant. It's more it's more worthy of a woman. It could still be short. Sandra Bullock has like to die for legs and wears dresses as my grandmother would have said up the puppet, you know, <laughs> there are not girly girl dresses. They're not frilly and ruffly and flouncy and 
pinky and sheer and they're lady dresses and she's got a fantastic body. So therefore it's ageless and it works on her. I not a fan of my thighs. So if no matter how skinny, no matter what size I am, my thighs are not my favorite features. So would I be wearing a short skirt with no stockings and white legs? No, but if it was, I'd wear one that's maybe a little longer on my leg, I'd wear tights or I'd wear fishnets or I'd make sure I had a tan on my legs or I'd even wear super sheer stockings. Like if you're a um, speaker and you're on stage, Mm -hmm. For sheer stockings, you know, pantyhose, they're fine. It, it holds you kind of in. No one will know you're wearing it. It's better than, you know, your naughty bits all like dingling around. <laughs> so it's, it's really just, you know, it's, it's like you got to think, how does this look? How is this style? There's no, like, you know, you can yeah. still wear young clothes. You can still, there, I buy t-shirts in Forever 21. Would I dare buy a pink mini baby doll dress? Because they're coming back in style, those early 90 ones. No way. I mean, did that? go away. But, you know, styles that come back that are also kind of iconic, like a motorcycle jacket, you could still wear that a different way, but not the baby doll dress. Yeah, yeah. I get you there. And a couple of years ago, I went shopping with my girlfriend for a wedding dress. We were, um, I was considering getting married with my partner. And I looked at some wonderful dress and I always want a really poofy tool one. And I found one with bows and a whole bunch of sparkles. And I said, oh my gosh, that's the perfect wedding dress. And it's interesting what you think on the hanger. And then when you put it in front, you know, on you, and then everyone's watching you. And I thought, you know, it doesn't quite look right. It, it looked like I was trying to wear a little girl's dress. Like, you know, when you go to church and you're five years old and you wear your best dress, that's what it looked like. And I was like, that does not look good for my wedding. And then I put on a very sophisticated classic looking one that was, um, uh, what was it? Uh, ivory. And I thought, oh, I'm not going to like that on me. Uh, uh-uh. uh. And I put that on baby. Did I look amazing? And, and I think that's something that I learned is that sometimes don't always go by what you think will look good on you. Just try it on. Try it on. There's no harm in trying it on. But in the same token, let's say you want it, you like that poofy tool, right? So now imagine if you had a black tool skirt and you wore it with like a little tight black blazer and really hot shoes. Same mm-hmm. look, more sophisticated. Yeah, it depends. I've got a little bit of um, hips going on here. So tool doesn't always work for me. But hey, yeah, I mean, it depends. Uh, Just give it a shot and and really, you know. Yeah, yeah. or maybe you want to wear an organza top or a lace top that has that same Mm -hmm. layer feel, but it's on another part of your body that you might feel more comfortable. Or maybe it's like a big tool wrap a big scarf that looks really Mm -hmm. pretty just don't do a hat (laughs) yeah 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 well this has been so much fun i i loved having you come join us share with everyone where they can find out more about your your website sharon get your wonderful books and and sign up for your wonderful courses My site is called focusonstyle.com. And if you go to focusonstyle.com forward slash insiders, I-N-S-I-D-E-R-S, you will get whatever my my freebie gift of the month is. So um, I switch that around a bit here and there, but it's always, it's a way that we could connect. You get to become on my, on my email list so that I share things there. I don't share with other people. You get any kind of special opportunities that are coming up, special tips, and you get my private Facebook group, but you also get a really cool free thing. Um, Right now there's a course that I'm waiting to see on. Sometimes it might be video training, but you know, it'll, it'll focus on style.com forward slash insiders is the best place. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I'm so blessed to have you come out here, Sharon, today. Thank you so much for coming to Savvy Business Radio. All right. Thank you for having me. You betcha. Savvy Business Radio runs in syndication on eight AM FM stations nationwide, including iHeartRadio, and six podcasting platforms. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or to become a guest and find out how we can help you get your message out in a bigger way, call 732-474-7375 or email Christina at SavvyBusinessRadio.com.